Good evening. Thank you to everyone that was able to join us here in Beaver Creek. And thank you and welcome to the many friends and family that are also with us here tonight by way of the web. Able to share in this very special remembrance. It is an incredible honor to be here with you all to celebrate the lives of these remarkable gentlemen. And as everyone here knows, it's also a big task to properly pay tribute to Andy, Seth, and Adam. Tonight, I can promise you that I don't have all of the words needed, and I don't have the perfect words for this moment. Summing these fellas up, to anyone that didn't know them would be a difficult task. Doing them justice in the presence of their family and friends is an even bigger challenge. And we all know why. Trying to describe them, their personalities, their achievements, their love for life, and their love for others is like trying to convey the beauty of the mountains to someone that has never seen one. It's just not possible. This loss is so tremendous to all of us. The most exceptional and memorable men, inspirational humans on so many levels, loving husbands, caring brothers, proud fathers, beloved sons, and the most loyal friends. They were the absolute very best in those roles. But as all of us know, it doesn't stop there. This is where the conversation only begins when trying to convey who these guys are. The descriptions proceed quickly to community crusaders, public servants, environmental protectors, advocates, givers, leaders. They were legends. Three men that put everyone else first and gave back to their community and anyone else 
that was fortunate to know them. And as we are all very well aware, they were not all business. They were adventurers in every sense. Bikers, skiers, surfers, mountaineers, mountain men. I'd also like to point out that they did often use their civic roles to create local amenities to feed their ongoing pursuit of a good time. (laughs) In the summer, Adam was equal parts aquatic athlete and a dirt trail lover. If you're not familiar with his almost daily routine, he would often link together a morning ride on his mountain bike cruising a nearby trail. And then he would rinse off at the Eagle River Park during an afternoon surf session. And then, and you all know it, with that classic Palmer smirk, he would say something like, come on, man, Eagle surf and turf. Many days on those same sunny afternoons, I would see him later on riding bikes around town with his girls, Kaylee, Savannah, and Montana. He loved them so much. And he was such an awesome girl dad. He was so happy in where he was in life and it rubbed off on all of us. Try to think of any time you were with Palmer and it wasn't one of the best times you had ever had, right? He inspired us to do better. He made you smile and many times he made you laugh out loud. The man had life figured out and was more than happy to show you the way. He was so talented musically as well an entertainer in every sense. Tonight, here on this stage, we will hear beautiful performances and tributes from his fellow musicians that knew him well. Andy. I could never understand why Andy was so passionate about building a river park when he didn't even paddle. Yet. Yet. Because as soon as the park was completed, I saw him there in a secondhand kayak, running laps through the park, his dog chasing after him along the bank. I promise you this. Cold beer waiting on the river's edge for when he was done. That huge, we can all see it right now, that huge smile of his visible from a mile away. Loading his boat into his Subaru Brat, that already had his softball gear and a keg in the back. (laughs) He was headed to league night to meet the love of his life, Amanda. She meant the world to him. He absolutely cherished her. They were such a perfect team. So there's Andy with his girl and his dog in the Subi, with enough beer to satisfy every team in town. And with that great beer comes great conversations. As every one of us knows, getting the chance to chat with Andy was time well spent. He spoke his mind and what he believed in. For me personally, I would often seek out Andy's input. I, like so many others, appreciated his insight and advice. His mind was amazing. The town he lived in was a source of pride for Andy, and he was such an outstanding member of the Eagle Town Council that he was selected as Mayor Pro Tem last year. He respected his community and peers, and they admired him back. The proof? Two giant Christmas penises at either end of Broadway right now. You know your town loves you back 
when they honor you with a now nightly display of this out of holiday season res erection. <laughs> and Seth, when you imagine in your mind the perfect all around mountain family man, he was it. He not only raised the bar as a father, husband, and a friend, he likely constructed that bar from old recycled bikes that he kept stored out back in his barn. The man was a phenomenon in so many ways. A skilled craftsman and architect with the most keen eye focused on the attention to detail, to perfection. You can see it not only in the house that he personally designed and built in Eagle, but into the life that he helped create within that home. He, alongside of his loving wife, Cindy, and their beautiful children, Faye and Loa, they are a family so full of kindness and warmth. Seth's heart was huge. He had love for everyone, and he would often call his friends out of the blue just to check in on them. He cared deeply about how others were doing. Some of those same friends were lucky enough to hitch a ride to the trailhead in Seth's old, and let's just say less than cosmetically perfect Volkswagen van, only to be just a little bit humiliated when he crushed them while riding a single speed. That man was the essence of Eagle, equally adored as he was admired. He was the epitome of humbleness and gratitude on a continuing quest of living a very fulfilling life. Tonight, you will hear beautiful stories about him about all three of these much-missed men. One thing is for certain, those three guys loved adventure. And man, did Andy, Seth, and Adam love you all. They loved you so very much. You know this. It's what makes their loss so much more painful and powerful. Tonight, we honor men that brought their families an endless amount of love, enriched our community. They made each one of us happy just to be in their presence. They were good to us, and they were great for our souls. Their absence from our lives will never, ever be filled, and our memories with them will only become more cherished over time. They are here with us tonight because they are held so deeply in each one of our hearts. Hearts that together mourn such a significant loss, yet have come here together tonight to celebrate Three lives well lived. Their spirits now soar higher than the Mount of the Holy Cross, momentarily leaving us behind to catch up with them another day. They were family men, gentlemen, leaders, the best, the boys. We will see them again. But this evening, we pay tribute to three of our community's finest, Andy, Seth, and Adam. Ladies and gentlemen, Angelo Fernandez.
Good evening, good, good evening, everybody. I'm Angelo Fernandez. As a friend um, of all three, Adam, Seth, and Andy, uh, I just want to start by extending my deepest condolences to the Bossum, Bossum, Jensen, and Palmer families. Our hearts are all with you. As I was preparing for tonight, uh, I've been thinking about a conversation I had with Adam when I came back from the Philippines last year on a trip. Um, he saw a note on my desk and we started talking about it. The note said, Bahala na. It's a phrase that Filipinos use and say, it means come what may. It said an acceptance of things that are usually out of our control, as well as a way to say that everything's gonna be okay. I can remember the look on his face when he repeated it. It was that signature Palmer grin. And he repeated it and he said, Bahala na. I think it resonated with him and I can see why. He lived his life that way. As I started to think about a few words that describe Adam, I thought about adventure, optimist, relationships, collaboration, and service. It's also how he showed up at work. In a conversation recently with one of our mutual friends, he had said that um, in working with Adam, he learned that Adam wasn't just that smart, polished, and creative person, he sprinkled in just the right dose of localism to make work fun. I think that description really nails Adam. Adam cared about his community. That definitely came out in his work. He was also focused on the future. He knew that our actions today had an impact on future generations. All these things that drove him also made him stand out as a public servant. In the workplace, Adam was real flexible. He rolled with the punches. He adapted to change. But he also led change. He was a change agent, and he saw change as an opportunity, mostly as an opportunity to strengthen his existing relationships, an opportunity to meet new people, and also an opportunity to change some minds of people that maybe didn't see the things the same way that he did. Over the years, many, many organizations in this community benefited from his collaborative approach, his big ideas, and his bias towards action. I know I'm gonna miss some here, but that list includes Eagle County Government, Holy Cross Energy, the Town of Eagle, Hard Scrabble Trails Coalition, Walking Mountain Science Center and the Climate Action Collaborative, the Habitat for Humanity family, and even back in the Dayvale resorts. He was also really active in his girls' sports, activities, and schools. And as we'll see tonight, he played music and approached music in the same way and played in many bands and countless musicians along the way and over the years. So when I was asked to talk about Adam's work tonight, I found it hard because you can't really talk about him solely in this professional uh, setting because he showed up in all area of his, areas of his life the same way. And I think that's what made him so authentic and what drew people in and what made everybody feel like he was their best friend. So one way that we can keep his spirit alive is to take a lesson from his playbook and to try, try to live our lives with a little bit of that bahalana, right? And welcome what may come because you never know what's going to be, what adventure is going to be around that next corner. So I just want to thank um, Kaylee for the invitation to come and talk about Adam. It's been absolutely my honor to do that. I just want you to take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, Mr. Hardy Bodenheimer. Good evening. 
My name is Hardy Bodenheimer. Along with my wife, Ellen, my children, Morgan, and Brooke, we are friends of the Palmers, Kaylee, Montana, and Savannah. I've also been considered the caboose on many adventures with Adam in the mountains, rivers, and oceans. It's truly surreal to have the memories and delight of all of these great times come flooding back to me. I'm sure you all feel the same way. I'm honored to be standing here on behalf of my family with this community and these friends celebrating Adam and the extraordinary impact he had on my life and the lives of so many others. In my time as Adam's bud, I quickly understood that Adam was a special person in that community, friends, and most importantly, family are what made Adam whole. Community, friends, and family were the focus of his life. Adam's love for our community and his passion to not only be present, but rather ingrained locally was amazing. Adam's focused energy while supporting and improving our community never wavered. He always wanted our community to reach its full potential while making sure it always stayed true to its roots and the things we all love about living here. In all honesty, the more time I spent with Adam, the more envious I became. I wondered, why was I not more like Adam? <laughs> How does this guy's commitment to community, such as the Eagle Town Council, Hard, Travel, Hard Scrabble Trails Coalition, the Eagle River Park, Holy Cross Energy, and so many more, come so easily? How is his commitment so effortless? It was an admirable talent of Adam's to support the community the way that he did and at the same time, selflessly reap the benefits of a fresh new single track that just happened to get approved. <laughs> like many of you, I always, looked forward, I always look forward to being out in our community. Seeing Adam at our girls' Halloween dance recital on Broadway, or flying through town on the Mango e-bike, going to and from work, or drowning out all of the irrelevant noises at the Eagle River Park with his block rocker while we surfed the evening away. It was always so fun. It was also always very apparent that Adam was home in this community, and it is the place he wanted to be the most. Adam loved to see his friends. I consider myself so lucky to have finally met Adam through my girls in my 40s. After starting a family and apparently growing up, who would have thought that I would have met a new buddy? Adam reignited my sense of adventure, motivated me to get out and get moving, and when I think back, most importantly, he helped me to take a breath, relax, and enjoy the little things. Adam was my new friend, and I was so excited for the future. Because of my friendship with Adam, I will look at life differently and try to approach this fragile life as a better person. Standing here, looking out at all of you, who are also friends of Adam, old and new, I feel the power of the friendships you had with him and know the value you placed on that relationship. It is one of the great gifts of life to have such a solid friend. I know Adam felt the same way about all of you. Now that we are left with this numbing void, I urge us, us friends, to bask in the memories and stories to keep Adam close. As friends, we will always need him to be near. 
Adam would want us to use the bond we had with him to strengthen our bonds with each other. Being present when Adam was with his family was magical. The Bodenheimers had the good fortune to grow up as a family with the Palmers. Through camping, Costa Rica tri beach trips, sup evenings on Sylvan Lake, river trips, and bonfires, we got to witness firsthand the positive, easygoing, natural approach Adam and Kaylee took in raising their wonderful girls. To experience firsthand the music, dance, and laughter mixed with a sense of adventure and passion for life has been and will continue to be so inspiring to our family. The Palmers are a constant reminder of what is truly important. Montana and Savannah, in life, your father gave you amazing gifts that you will carry with you forever. As you grow up and continue to flourish, these gifts will ensure that your father will always be with you. Kaylee, it has added so much to my life and the lives of my family Experience first, experiencing firsthand your relationship with Adam, a team through ups and downs. As a couple, you inspired and gave hope. Your relationship with Adam and the family you built together will be one of the great legacies that will get you through this in the short term and allow you, all of you to thrive in the long term. As Adam looks down upon all of us as community, friends, and family, he is so happy that together we will get through this and knows we will always be here for all of you. Montana, Savannah, Benny, Pua, and Hee Hee. I'm going to miss my friend Abom. I'm so grateful to have had the opportunity to experience a friendship that offered so much and was always so easy. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, it is a great honor to present three of Adam's greatest allies on the musical stage. And I would like to point out that they have never performed together until this evening. Brought together for this moment for Adam, I present to you Jenna Skinner, Rob Eaton, and Ellie Vares. Three sheets when I wrote this, so take it me and send me to the bar. I don't care, I'll do it till I buy the farm. Since there's so much in this well being, safe and warm. May you wander far, constantly question who you are. Try to stand now, but camouflage is easier, they say. I want her in the room, but it's easier 
this way Hide from the consequences Say it what's a snake Rivers feed and steal from the sea Sorry nobody rides for free She was startled by a sound She woke up looking deep into a stranger's eyes She could finally rest, give up the fight Freedom always comes with a cost Only if you've gained more than you lost you, I can tell where you're going, where you've been. Venture to say that you won't come, come here, here again. again. If, if I, I was honest, honest, I'd say you're my only friend. Goodbye is shallow as they sound. But I can tell that you have won first prize You'll be a rock star, you're the cream, you always rise And I can say I knew you when you couldn't fly Hope you don't go catch the same disease Nothing is just quite what When I wrote this, who took it me and sent me to the bar? I don't care, I'll do it till I buy the farm. Seems there's so much you miss while being safe and warm. And me wander far, constantly question who you are. 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 Great song, huh? That was one of Adam's tunes. Uh, nothing could replace his whistle, but we try with the saw. <laughs> it was good because Rob and I can't whistle. So. <laughs> um, this is another one of Adam's tunes that um, he would always play when Kaylee was in the audience, so I'd like to send that out to... Um, Kaylee and Amanda and Cindy. Exploring from which 
Thank you so much. Such a beautiful tribute. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, I would like to welcome to the stage, on behalf of Seth, John Gitchell. Um, Ellie and Rob and Jenna, I think that's the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. So, 
My name is John, John Gitchell, and I've known Seth for the past 15 years or so. First of all, through Seth's architecture and his green building, and then through his work with Energy Smart Colorado, and most recently as my close colleague in sustainable communities at Eagle County. Seth and I had several things in common. Uh, one of those was a, a love for rivers. And um, last summer, Seth borrowed some paddle boards from us, and he came over to our house in, um, in the VW van, and we hauled out the, the paddle boards, they're inflatable paddle, paddle boards, and we hauled those out, uh, put them in the van. I brought out the pump, and I discovered that I was missing that little yellow tube that connects the pump to the boat. And um, so Seth, in, in, um, in true form, said, oh, don't worry about it, we'll, we'll figure this out, you know? And, well, and they did. They had a, a great day on the river. They got some friends and family out. And somehow they got air into those um, paddle boards. So um, let's see, a couple days later, Seth brought back the, the gear um, to the driveway and we hauled the, the paddle boards in. And of course, I just um, stuffed them into their place in the garage and forgot about them. Over the holiday season, uh, Seth dropped by with a really beautiful, um, very fancy wrapped present for us. And um, so we chatted for a while and then um, I took it in and put it under the, under the tree. On Christmas morning, we opened our, our gifts and of course, um, the gift that Seth had brought over was uh, that little yellow tube um, for, for our um, pump, you know, for our paddle boards. And that was the sort of, sort of thing that Seth did all, all the time. Um, he was just such a kind and caring and giving person. Uh, another, another thing that Seth and I had in common is that we both lived in Telluride in our after college um, days, years. And uh, I lived there earlier than Seth, um, but he was there a few years later, and that's actually where he, where he met Cindy in Telluride 30 years ago or so. And um, some, of the, some of the things that Seth did while he was in Telluride to pay, pay his rent were, um, he was a Nordic ski instructor, and he was also a, a bike mechanic, and he worked at the shops in town. And um, so, he, he had a lot of mechanical skills and he loved bicycles. Uh, one of the things he loved most um, were bikes. And so he pulled together a radio show with one of his bike mechanic friends. And Seth grew up in, in the Boston area, home of Car Talk. So um, he, uh, he pulled together this radio show on Kodo, the community radio radio uh, station in Telluride, and they called it Bike Talk. And um, so they would encourage people to call in with their biggest bicycling problems, and, and they would banter and talk about, um, about bike mechanic things, and, and uh, that, that also was the sort of thing that Seth was, was really drawn to, is just uh, having fun and doing a community service with the talents that he had. Um, the last time I, I spoke with Seth was on the Friday before he went on the hut trip. And um, we, we talked a lot over this past year. We talk about work, we talk about our parents and um, you know our kids, families, and uh, we talked ab about a lot of different things, but uh, on that call, um, Seth talked about, um, you know, getting ready for this trip and gear and some logistics and things, but, but mostly what Seth was concerned about was that he was going to be going away while he had um, ski racing with his kids um, that weekend, so he wanted to stay there 
for the weekend and, and do that, be there with them. And then um, he was going to drive down and join the group after that. But his biggest concern was that he was going to be away from his family for um, just three days. So um, I just want to ask all of us to keep some of these things in mind about Seth. And I, I know I'll be um, thinking about him a lot and trying to apply some of the things that he did in his life to my life. So, thank you. Friends and family, I'd like to welcome to the stage Miss Kim Langmaid. Seth, Adam, and Andy were champions of our mountain communities. I met Adam shortly after he and Kaylee moved to the valley, and we partnered on so many community projects over the years. I met Andy more recently during the creation of the Climate Action Plan for the Eagle County community. But it was Seth I've known the longest. I met Seth in Wyoming 25 years ago when his wife Cindy and I were in the graduate program at Teton Science School. Seth was living in Telluride at the time, and many weekends he made the 11-hour journey to visit Cindy. Seth quickly became part of our close-knit cohort, joining us in learning and exploring all the greater Yellowstone ecosystem had to offer, including skiing the backcountry of Grand Teton National Park. He was one of the most graceful, energetic, and inspiring teleskiers I've ever known. A few years later, along with our friend Ryland Gardner, we went on a ski trip in Canada, and shortly afterwards, Seth and Cindy moved to the Eagle Valley. Cindy joined our team at Gore Range Natural Science School, now Walking Mountain Science Center, to lead our youth programs department. And Seth was so excited about the possibilities here. He was passionate about mountain communities and had a vision for how his design and architecture could enhance the valley. He was intrigued and inspired by the vision for a sustainable learning economy, a mountain community enriched and motivated to create positive change together. Seth began his work as a local architect, and he quickly made lasting friendships throughout the community. When Adam, John, Yuri, and others at Eagle County launched the Energy Smart program in 2010, Seth quickly jumped on board and was one of the first energy assessors, bringing the program to hundreds of families, helping make their homes safe, energy efficient, and more climate friendly. Seth also joined the volunteer eco board of building specialists who advised Eagle County commissioners on how to make positive impacts through grants programs and to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Seth became a highly skilled and trusted member of the collaborative team working to accomplish our community-wide climate action goals. He excelled in his new role at Eagle County where he could use his expertise in building science and design along with his special gift for building relationships. Everyone in our tribe of sustainability professionals would agree that Seth's positive energy and can-do attitude was infectious and made our work together so much more creative and fun. I teach a course called Careers and Skills in Sustainability at Colorado Mountain College, and last week I shared the career paths of Seth, Adam, and Andy with my students to highlight the creative ways people can design their professional lives to make a positive impact. The care and dedication of these three men was exemplary, and they were role models for so, so many of us. Seth didn't have a master plan for his career. It was his creative intention and motivation to help others that guided his way. In the words of the great mythologist Joseph Campbell, Seth truly followed his bliss. Seth applied a special aesthetic and caring intention to everything he did, from the bikes he rode, to the cars he drove, to the all-electric sustainable home he built for his family, to the friendships he made, and his love 
for his whole family, especially Cindy, Faye, and Loa. Seth was a Renaissance kind of guy. He always had many projects in the works, designing, building, and crafting things, experimenting, connecting, and pushing the envelope to enhance all our lives. He had a talent for synthesizing and seeing how everything could fit together. The sound of his laugh, the twinkle in his eyes, the pondering look on his face when he would hold his chin and say, hmm, what about this, in his own way, were all part of his special, special caring quality. I want to share an excerpt from the beautiful tribute in the Colorado Sun newspaper written by Seth's good friends, Dave Manzella and Pavan and Carl Kruger. Dave's words here about Seth are better than I can say it. Seth always showed up. He lived in the moment and taught many to do the same. He was incredibly optimistic, but could be real and vulnerable. He was thoughtful with his words and actions. He was a visionary. For his life and the life of his family and for his community, seeing the more beautiful world he knew was possible. He was an amazing husband to Cindy and dad to Faye and Loa, and he modeled how to love unconditionally. Personally, one of the greatest gifts from Seth was that he would always just pop by the house unannounced to visit my husband Peter and me, just to check in and catch up. The last time I saw Seth was when he dropped by the day before he went to Mexico this winter with Faye and Loa. He was so excited to spend some quality fun time in the surf and sun with his kids. His love and care for his family was beautiful, and it was his top priority. His presence and love lives on within and around his family, especially Faye, Loa, and Cindy. Today, we might feel there's a huge black hole in our lives with our close-knit sustainability network throughout our valley-wide community, and for those who may be listening and live much further away, beyond and across the country. We can honor Seth by sharing our good memories of him, supporting his family, and continuing to honor his legacy as we rally together, love one another, and work to shape our mountain communities. Thank you, Seth, for being such a good friend to so many of us. So many beautiful memories and beautiful performances this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, I would like to welcome to the stage Custom 20. Chris Weathers, Justin Ernst, Gregor, and Tanner Hall, all of whom have played so many times throughout our valley with the boys. We've gone ahead and thrown the, thrown the gauntlet tonight and decided to play a bunch of Adam, bunch of Adam Palmer tunes. I, we were worried about that toilet noise uh, getting through. <laughs> um, you probably... Sorry about that, guys. Just a normal custom 20 show. Got to have some technical difficulties right. to start. We may not actually sing Adam's words. We might just make up words about beer like he did every time. I have a feeling you know this first one. If you do, please sing along. He'd like that. Thank you. 
you search and what do you think you'll find? They say it's greener on the other side. What a simplest life lived from day to day. Ray of sun melts my frown, blows my blues away. But I kick it around. Just a few loose rocks on solid ground. There's blues in the sky. Lois, hold your head up high. This wish is for you. Do as I say, not as I do. Same stories they tell. Well, I da 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 So you're searching for something to fill the gap Or just to rearrange what you already have With the simplest things to live from day to day Let's put an end to this endless pursuit But I can't get around Just a few loose rocks on solid ground There's blues in the sky you Always hold your head up high This wish is for you Do as I say, not as I do Same stories they tell from this song But if I had twice the time it'd be half as long This simple is life you'll find the truth Let's put an end to this endless pursuit But I can't get around Da 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 da
da da da da da da da Keep waiting for the big keyboard solo. Yeah. We're missing a few things. Pardon my Adam Palmer imitation, but hopefully we can do this stuff justice tonight. He always said he could get any crowd going. He said, I don't care. You give me a wedding, give me a funeral, I don't care. And then the son of a bitch left us with this. But we miss him, my goodness. But that's the truth, as you all well know. He could bring any room to a Laughter very, very quickly. This next song illustrates that quite well. It's one I think some of you know as well. Break tapping, playing me a fool. Your kid may be an honor student, but you need more school. Almost a silver plume, I can't see the light. Maybe I'll make my move, gun it on the right. Almost a silver plume. We're going to do it again. I can see, see the light. Maybe I'll make my move. Got it on the right. Finally by this guy. Swift truck closed my gap. Once again, I'm stuck behind. I think I'm going to snap. Left laners get moving on. Like gagging and clogging up the lane. Left laners get moving on, such a shame. You plaguers driving me insane. When I can't take it no more Make it to Floyd Hill I gun the low left lane White wheel tires squeal I wave with just one finger As I blow on by White whale starts sputtering I think she's gonna die Left laners get moving on Stop lollygagging And clogging up the lane Left laners get moving on Such a shame You plaguers driving me insane Don't know why this stuff all, 
always happens to me it's something special my friends all agree every time those left laners blocking me on my way even a broken clock is right two times a day left laners get moving on stop lollygagging and clogging up the lanes Left laners get moving on, such a shame. You plaguers driving me insane. Thank you. This is one of my favorite songs that, of Adam's. I never sang it before, so it's a little, <laughs> it's a little tricky, right? It's such a good one. You threw over under that making it through the song. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's hear it for Tanner again on the guitar. We'd like to thank him for joining us. Shout out to Doug and Ollie and all the folks around town who make the open mics and everything and keep the music going. We'll keep that up. We'll celebrate again come summertime. This is another one Adam would pull out in the middle of a dance set. And it's about a bad breakup. And he made it somehow this celebratory, wonderful song. So we'll try to do the same. You'll hear the jolly lyrics. This is obviously not about Kaylee. Life. 
life is life we live it well and i some say it's best let me walk away 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 Adam Palmer, ladies and gentlemen, making us look good for the last five years or so. Whoever had the guitar stand through the whole song won. I'm going to give this one a shot, but I haven't made it through it yet. <laughs> um, this will be the last original Custom 20 song for our... Uh, retirement here but wrote this for everybody and Adam had a big part of it so here we go Gather round the bonfire with a brew or two Listen in to lies we know you can make true Cause where eagle flies you follow You know we roll the flow and surf the snow And the river flow with you Like a river wave, I've never seen you break. Always elevating everyone around. You're tangled up in blue. This one's for Kaylee boys, and a one and a two. And we jam all night until you see those smiles. Oh, until you see those smiles. Cause my story is written in the skies of Montana All these Colorado songs in my head And warmed on the golden fields of Savannah So I can let this go And all these stars got wishes that already came true The Seattle wind carries whispers only you knew.
hear the man calling me again Cause my story is deep in the eyes of Montana I'll always be those songs in your head And safe in the heart of Savannah So I can let this go And look at those stars Oh, none of them more brighter than you Boy, oh, I'm so proud of you And this cool breeze carries these whispers home to you As I saw it coming down, all that's left is you. From wherever I go, you'll always be my home. Thank you so much. The words, the remembrance, the reflection, the music, the celebration of three incredible men. It is of the highest honor this evening that I would like to welcome to the stage the father of one of my good friends, Phil Jessen, Andy Jessen's father. Good evening. When I was invited to speak this evening, my response was that I was honored beyond words. And I am indeed. In that same sense, <clears throat> I'm honored beyond words to have had the privilege of, I was going to say walking beside Andy Jessen for just over 40 years, but that wouldn't be quite accurate. It's more like jogging at some points, <laughs> running frantically at other points and finally seeing him just leave me far behind. I think that, I'm sure that Andy and Seth and Adam, I was gonna initially say were cut from the same bolt of cloth, but that's too small a statement. I think it's more accurate that those three young men were caught, cut from the same tapestry of life a tapestry interwoven with elements of exuberance, excitement, love for families and friends, <clears throat> anticipation, adventure, <clears throat> but most of all, service. That was the broadest swath of material in the tapestry of their three lives. Perhaps one of the highest compliments we typically think of paying to a man or woman is to say, well, he would give me, or she would give me, the shirt off their back. Well, uh, when Andy came home from St. Lawrence University and got ready to head for Colorado for a year of skiing, he literally did give me the shirt off his back, <laughs> as well as a wonderful tie, which I still wear as a Father's Day gift, a lovely ensemble Christmas gift from Andy and Amanda, and the belt, which he prescribed for the gentlemen to wear at their incredible wedding ceremony. When um, <clears throat> we moved to Hartford, 
It took us a few years to marshal the funds and resources to finish off our lower level, the cellar, so that Andy could have his own bedroom. <clears throat> but when we finally accomplished that, he had not only his own bedroom, but his own bathroom. And uh, that delighted him. Um, my job, and people would say, you only had one job, so how could you screw this up? <clears throat> one of my jobs each morning was to go down and, uh, I want to say, roust Andy up a little bit and uh, get him ready to get ready for school, into the shower, come up, get some breakfast, all those things you want to do before you head off for academia. And uh, every once in a while, Andy would have little signages on his door, something that would catch my eye as I came down in the morning. Um, he had a sign which is still on his door, which has now become Marion's pottery studio, his mom's pottery studio, and it said cat crossing. Uh, Andy loved cats. Andy loved all animals, in fact. One morning I came down, and this must have been early in his uh, education in penmanship and handwriting, and he had a, a little piece of paper, and he had written in block letters, R-E dash M-E-M-B-E-R, R-E dash member. <clears throat> and I was curious, so I said, uh, Andy, I see your little sign, R-E dash member. Um, are you trying to remember something in particular? And he said, no. I just want to remember not to forget anything. And that, that kind of made sense to me. <laughs> Another morning I came down and he had written on a little scrap of paper and posted on his door the word Zooquarium. And I said, at breakfast, Andy, I see your sign Zooquarium. Uh, can you explain that to me? And he got all excited and he said, yes, when I grow up and after college, I want to have a Zooquarium and I want to populate it with uh, aquatic animals, turtles, um, seals, all sorts of things like that, but also representative land animals. And um, his mother and I were always fond of supporting his dreams. And that seemed like a fairly reasonable dream for him at age seven. So we encouraged it, uh, not knowing that <clears throat> he would um, start to populate our home in Hartford with representatives of uh, most of the earthly species. Uh, after a while, walking in the house at the end of the day, was kind of like walking up the gangplank of Noah's Ark. He had frogs. He had chameleons, actually anoles. We used to call them Andy's cannolis. He had gerbils. He had hamsters. He had guinea pigs. He had mice. He had cats. He had dogs. He had a rat, which improbably enough was the most amiable of all those animals. Go figure. So that was Andy's aquarium. A long, long time ago, in a distant universe, I was a college student taking a course in romantic poetry. And I read a poem by the English romantic poet William Wordsworth. It was called, Lines Composed a Few Miles Above Tintern Abbey. Uh, one of my fraternity brothers asked me what I was reading, and I told him the title. And he said, oh yeah, I read that. Uh, Lines Composed uh, a Few Miles Above Tin Pan Alley. Well, it's not, not quite accurate. Andy's uh, sister Jennifer would tell you that Tin Pan Alley was the part of New York City where music publishers um, worked uh, from 1895 to 1916 or so. But it was definitely above Tintern Abbey. So William Wordsworth was wandering around above the River Wye in England, and he was moved to uh, sit upon a rock and compose this poem, and he probably made a de decent living from it. And when I read that poem through, it's a long poem, I thought, well, it's, it's nice if you can make a living doing that. Um, the, the lines that I remember that jump out from me, uh, for me from that poem are these. He wrote on and on and on and on, and then just a couple of lines jumped out. The worth of a man is measured by his unremarked and unremembered acts of kindness and of love. Uh, we have heard in, tonight of the remembered and the remarked incredible acts of kindness, love, and service of these three wonderful young men. But I would just like to hit, in Andy's case, upon a few of the unremarked and possibly unremembered, except by maybe one or two people, instances which are kind of representative of the man that he was. 
He was very excited when we called and told him that of many years, after many years of not having a pet, we had decided to adopt a uh, rescue racing greyhound named Pocahontas. Poco for short, or when she starts doing her laps around the dining room table, Poco Loco. <laughs> and so Andy took time out from his always busy schedule to call us, not just once, but twice, to offer us counsel about dogs. And his first sentence and his last sentence in all these conversations was the same thing. And it still resonates very much with me today. The first thing he said was, don't give her an opportunity to fail. And the last thing he said was, don't give her an opportunity to fail. And if we don't give a dog an opportunity to fail, why would we not think to not give the people in our lives an opportunity to fail? Because if we don't give others an opportunity to fail, haven't we more or less given them the opportunity to succeed? And I think that's a wonderful message from Andy. Andy was pretty much one of the most generous people I know with his time, with his money, with his energy, with his counsel, with his vision. He was in college, and I'm sure he was busy. We had gone up to visit him in the fall, walking along the beautiful campus of St. Lawrence University, and I noticed a memorial bench for a former student on one of the greens. So I walked over, and there was an inscription there. It was a quote from Abraham Lincoln. And I thought, wow, that's, that's really a great... I didn't think enough about it to sit down and write it down so I could use it. But at any rate, I started thinking about it as the winter came on. So I called Andy, and I described to him the location of the bench. And I said, I'm wondering if you could um, get out to that bench and uh, write down that quote for me and call and let me know, because I think I'd like to use it in one of my Lincoln programs. So um, he waded out through snow, which at that point was probably up to his waist, with a pen and a piece of paper, and wrote down that quote from Abraham Lincoln. And uh, I'll refer back to that a little further down the line. Uh, another example of Andy's astonishing generosity was at the wedding of his sister, where, again, I had just one job. My one job was to take care of all the gratuities for all the different parties there. And somehow I had barely miscalculated the dollar amount involved in that. And so I ended up standing down in the lobby by the coat rack with five envelopes in my hand, trying to make six gratuities out of five envelopes. And Andy came down, and he kind of sensed what was going on. And he said to me, you know, can I help you? And I said, well, I'm a little bit short on money here. I was probably about $150 short. And this is what he said. He said, I have $70 in my pocket doing absolutely nothing. And he took his $70 out. We put our heads together, and we decided to stiff the minister. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> we, we caught up with him later when we got back to Hartford. <laughs> but um, I'm always going to remember Andy, and I'm sure you will, uh, by the letters in his name, A for availability. He was always available, always accessible. And I'm going to drop the E, I'm going to say N for enthusiasm. Uh, D for determination, and I could go on at great length for that. And Y, in the name Andy, for yearning. The things he yearned to do, um, to spend more time with his lovely wife, to go on more vacation adventures, to um, exercise his entrepreneurial skills even more. The latest thing he talked to me about was a venture he called Subaru Rescue Incorporated. <laughs> yeah. And he was going to round up a bunch of uh, Subarus, which were not roadworthy anymore, and um, fix them up himself. He became a great Subaru mechanic. And then get them into the hands of people who needed a car to get their children to work uh, or to school or to get to work themselves and to maintain themselves in the community. Um, in closing, just a little story about his cat. His cat's name was Bandit. Uh, she got that name because she had a habit of suddenly, when you least expected it, jumping up on the dining room table and snatching a morsel of food off your plate, uh, sometimes an entire piece of toast. So that was her name, Bandit. She lived for a very long time. Eventually, as uh, long-lived animals do, um, she lost uh, most of her hearing and all of her vision. 
For those of you who have ever had an animal that lost their hearing and or vision, you know that they adapt pretty readily and they, they get around fairly well. Well, Bandit had a habit, uh, years in development, of coming downstairs to the dining room and as I was eating my breakfast, she would pause to my right and then she would jump up onto my lap. And she continued to do this for many years. And after she lost all of her sight, she kept doing that. She would come down, she would sit, she would kind of inch forward, and then she would take that leap, uh, a leap of faith, if you will. And I'm thinking as we move forward with our lives that we need to not put these fine men behind us, that we need to put them in front of us to follow in the well-illuminated path that they have laid out for us, a wonderful path of service. And I want to close with a quotation from Abraham Lincoln and just describe the circumstances leading to that quotation. And I'm sorry that I've taken up so much time from the program. Um, Abraham Lincoln was sitting in his Oval Office uh, shortly after the end of the Civil War, visiting with a good friend of his from back in Springfield, Illinois. His name was Joshua Speed. And they was catching up on all the gossip, what's going on with all the attorneys back in Springfield. And they always called each other by their last name. So it was, well now Lincoln, or well now Speed, or Speed, would you tell me this and this and that. So the Civil War had just ended. Um, it was a hot April day, probably flies buzzing around in the air because they didn't really have screen windows at that time. They chatted for a couple hours. And finally, it was time for Speed to get back to Springfield, Illinois, and for President Lincoln to get back to the work which he had to do. And um, this is my abid abiding thought. Um, about Andy as I finish up tonight. Lincoln finally got up and walked over to Speed and they shook hands, never knowing when they would see each other again. And this is what he said. He said, Speed, die when I may. I want it said of me that I always plucked a thistle and planted a flower where I thought a flower would grow. Thank you. Such a powerful message. Thank you so much, Mr. Jensen. It is truly an honor to have you and your family here with us tonight to celebrate Andy and everyone else. It is with the most sincere and heartfelt introduction that I present to the stage Andy's wife, Mrs. Amanda Jessen. friends. <laughs> hmm. So before I get started, I just wanted to um, thank everybody who's made tonight possible. Eric and everybody else here at the Velar, this vision for tonight is beyond anything I could have imagined. And uh, the fact that you all were able to put it together is just, I'm so grateful. The music has been incredible, and I also just really want to thank our families and our friends, and especially the Bond family. And uh, my ultimate support person, Emily Hutto, has been um, just incredible in this last month. And really, for all of you for being here to honor Andy, Adam, and Seth in this way, it just really means so much to me. So thanks for that. So I've, doing, uh, I've been doing a little bit of writing in the last couple weeks, and I was wondering if you guys want to hear some things about Andy. <laughs> so in the first few days after the avalanche, I kept thinking that the words would come to me. The right words, the appropriate words, words that could somehow convey all the things at once. Words for all of you who called and messaged or stopped by or made a meal. And words for our families who literally dropped everything to be with me 
for my friends and all the Bonfire staff who awed me with your strength and wisdom. Words that might attempt to measure and summarize the impact Andy had in his 40 vibrant years. Words that might capture something of the 12 beautiful words, 12 beautiful years that we spent together. But the truth is that in our partnership, words were really Andy's thing. We balanced each other out really well that way. Andy adored numbers and the written word, and I am much more of a visuals and talking kind of gal. Andy started a packing list weeks before a trip, and I would be throwing things in a bag while we were walking out the door. Our brains worked differently in so many different ways. It could seem like opposites, but we thought of it as the best of all worlds. I trusted him utterly and completely in every sense, and that trust was made even stronger by our differences. So tonight, as I look out at this gathering, I'm drawing strength from Andy's agility with words, from the way that he loved to debate an issue, to discuss the finer points of West Coast versus New England IPAs, to respond to email with lightning speed, and I'm also drawing strength from all of you. I think about the power and the potential that Andy always saw in Eagle in this community that he worked so hard for. And I remember when we met uh, about 12 years ago, I learned how determined Andy was to make a home in Eagle. His East Coast ties were still intact and his mood from April to September was always contingent on the win-loss record of the New York Mets. Even still, he was absolutely certain that the mountains of Colorado were his home. He loved the sense of possibility in Eagle and the proximity to the outdoors, the spirit of the people, and of course, the fact that there was a bowling alley. Over the years, Andy became known as a business owner, a member of the town council, a guy determined to keep Eagle weird and the shaft-like Christmas decorations a staple of the holiday season. Of course, he was all of those things. He was also my partner in crime, my pet co-parent, and the other half of all of my favorite stories. Our little family in Eagle was a very devoted one. People actually used to ask us all the time for advice on working with a spouse or how we had done it for so long and were still seemingly so happy. But honestly, the truth was that we just acted at work the same way that we acted at home. It was with complete trust. At Bonfire Brewing, we felt so incredibly lucky to have assembled a team of people who cared about this valley and this community as much as we did. It's a dedicated crew of employees who live here because of the outdoors and the elements, not in spite of them. Our customers, many of you who are here tonight or watching online, share this vibe and complete our greater Bon family. Andy envisioned Bonfire as a kind of central hub, a spot where we could gather and regroup, recharge, and find connection. In creating Bonfire, he wanted to make not just a successful business, but a sense of place. In the early years of Bonfire, I saw, sometimes saw Andy torn between his love for the mountains and his love for running a business. And in truth, both can be adrenaline producing at times. This year, though, he had really finally started to find a perfect balance between work life and the call of adventure. He would respond to emails and run a payroll in the morning and then hit the slopes in the afternoon. There was a peace and an equilibrium that he'd worked so hard to create in this life, and it was so beautiful to see him finally find that balance. But Andy, like so many of us who live this mountain lifestyle, was always looking forward to the next challenge bigger peaks, steeper terrain, more grand and memorable experiences. I know that not everyone is comfortable with the risks that come along with pursuing extreme sports, with the dangers inherent in seeking these kind of highs. And most of these people also realize, as I do, that if we told Andy that he couldn't pursue those adventures, he wouldn't be Andy, and the same is true for any of these men. He wouldn't have been able to do everything he did in Eagle if he wasn't also feeding and fueling that wanderlust. I didn't go on this last trip with him, but I was there for a lot of the others. And I can say with certainty that this is where his spark always started. 
It was somewhere in the shadow of a steep snow-covered mountain or the top of a glistening peak. Everything else about him, everything, his ideas, his drive, his essence, it all started from there. When Andy first described this last grand adventure to me, he said it would be the trip of a lifetime. I loved seeing him excited about this kind of stuff. He was such a workhorse that sometimes he needed to be convinced to take time off work and, leave, and take a vacation. Most people on the planet never get to access this type of terrain. The mountains are steep and formidable. The elements in the weather are harsh, and the avalanche danger is something everyone who enters the backcountry is solemnly aware of. That being said, in our tiny pocket of the world, these risks make sense to us. We live with this daily awareness of the power and the hazard of these mountains. I've been thinking a lot about uh, these two forces lately, these rival forces at hand that so many of us here live with every day the pursuit of adventure, and the very real prospect of danger. In Eagle County, we're surrounded by this stunning beauty in our craggy mountains and their epic scale, the fierce cold and snow, just as we are nurtured by the warmth we find among our neighbors here in the valley. This contrast is part of our fabric. The morning after the avalanche, I arrived in Silverton around 4 a.m. At sunrise, I walked the streets in a daze, slowly stepping along back and forth to pass the excruciating minutes. The helicopters flew over back and forth and around the mountain for hours, bringing rescuers and supplies up to that area. And I waited and walked. And I was at the base of the mountains, and I felt close, but so, so far. A pickup truck full of search and rescue team members rolled down the snow-packed street en route to join the operation. Our trusty MC, Ken Hovey, was with me, and he motioned for them to stop and then introduced us. I had no words at the time, and he said, this is Amanda, and today you're heading out looking for her husband and his friends. Our eyes met, and I saw deeply that I knew exactly, and they knew, what job they were about to go do. We told them, stay safe, and we told them we appreciated them, but we didn't need words, and really there were no words that could be said in that moment. In our brief interaction, our hearts and theirs met in this deep embrace of connection, compassion, and also anguish. And then the heroes continued up the hill. The next hours were difficult ones, and many of these experiences I'm still processing and probably will be for a long time. But one thought that I kept returning to was that of cold. Andy always relished the winter, he, its fierceness, its strength. He always was overjoyed by snow in the forecast. He never got cold in winter, but in that moment, I was completely overwhelmed by how much I wanted to stay and keep him warm. Later that day, the sheriff told us bad news about the weather. He, there was a chance the incoming snowstorm would mean that they couldn't get the guys out the next day, and maybe not even the day after that. My parents were back at my house in Eagle, but the thought of leaving felt physically painful. And I could think of nothing other than Andy and our friends being out in the snow. That night, my family and friends convinced me to return home, and during that five-hour drive, I was so numb completely numb, hollowed out, shivering uncontrollably even under the blast from the heat vents. But then, as we got closer and closer to Eagle, I could feel it. I could feel our home and our town and our people reaching out for me, holding me up, and waiting for me to collapse into their arms when I arrived home. It felt like the universe was sending me warmth, and I knew that was where I was supposed to be. I feel Andy all around me here in Eagle County. I know this is where he is, and I know this is where he was that night, not out on the cold mountain, but home. It was his love of these mountains, 
of this place, of this community, which led Andy to make a life in Eagle and to devote his life to making it a better place for all of us. He lived remarkably. I loved him so deeply, and I miss him so, so much. Thank you so much. Let's have a cheers for Andy. <laughs> Good night. I don't believe that any of us in our short lifetimes will ever witness as powerful a moment as that. Let's let the celebrations of these incredible lives continue. I'd like to welcome to the stage this evening one of my favorite bands and one of Palmer's because he is one of the founding members. These guys are remarkable. Let's all stand and dance and sing and celebrate together with the Alora brothers, Rob Eaton Jr., Sean Healy, and Andrew Portwood.
You know I sit and think a lot about the absence of her spot. Her geography, it always made me smile. Her silhouette come and gone. In my dream, she still lives on. And her integrity never go on child. Yeah, I want her that mighty river road. Come the bed. Thank y'all. Here I come, I 
come on, come on home. You got to slow your road. Thanks, y'all. Everybody got a place that they call home. Everybody got a place that they come from. Don't you know it's your cocoon? Everybody got a place that they come from. Everybody got a place that they call home. That's the recipe that got you on this road. Just another
Changing life's big plans Find myself wondering Just where has the time gone Just another time. It's been an honor and a privilege. Thank you very much. I promised myself I'd stick to the script, but right now I can't. How incredible is it that <clears throat> these three lives were so amazing that we have people doing performances to them? It's just amazing. I've been backstage watching the performances, hearing the speeches, also watching online. There are so many people that are tuned in right now sharing their love with you all. I'm sure you'll see it later on, but to everyone visiting with us on the web, thank you for being here and thank you to you all. While we gather here tonight, we would also like to take a moment to pay our respect and our gratitude to the men and women of Search and Rescue. We are so appreciative to the heroic efforts. It's okay, you can clap. It's okay. That's what this is for. <laughs> You're making this a little easier. Uh, I'll just tell you this, I'll carry on with where I was, but I've lived here a long time. I've witnessed search and rescue, but not like I did a month ago. We are so appreciative to the heroic efforts of the San Juan Search and Rescue team in risking their lives in order to recover Adam, Seth, and Andy. This group is the bravest men and women that you can imagine, working in the mountains and in very inhospitable conditions while searching for those in need is one of the most noble, heroic, and admirable characteristics that anyone can possess. They literally take the decision to put others first, to undertake the searches in the most grueling, demanding, and dangerous scenarios. And any of you that are familiar with the San Juans, serious business there. To be on their team is as much life-threatening as it is life-changing. And they do it with such commitment that when you witness it, you can never see what they do in the same way again. When you learn that they do it as volunteers, you cannot help but put them into a category all their own. I now call them snow saviors. As Amanda had mentioned earlier, we drove down to Silverthorne, or excuse me, to Silverton the night of the avalanche, and we arrived just before dawn. While there was still hope, 
we knew that that day would be difficult. If you have ever been to the beautiful town of Silverton, you know it's as small and quiet as it is unique. I will never forget that morning and seeing their mountain rescue vehicle. They told me they would share that photo. That is them. That's who went and got our boys. <clears throat> what I saw in that rig that morning was a group of incredible mountain beasts going into a very dangerous zone to retrieve our friends, people they had never met. They dug and fought through the snow for nearly three days. They had more slides that came down on them. They broke equipment. They had gear buried in those additional slides the next day. Amanda and I witnessed it and heard about it, as well as the four survivors. No words can come close to sharing the appreciation we have for the San Juan team, and I would like to recognize them with you all now. I'm just going to say, I told you, I'll go off here. The one on the right covered in a mask, I knew when I made eye contact with him, don't look at him. Don't look him in the eye. That is a, that is a mountain savage. Thank you, San Juan team. You can sit. This is amazing. This is amazing. This is amazing. So, so incredible to honor these men. I can't believe that we're here doing this. None of us can. But just the most remarkable men. Locally, we have a team of equally selfless and passionate mountain men and women that perform these same heroic acts here. Our community in Eagle County is so fortunate to have the care and resources of Vail Mountain Rescue, who for years now have come to the aid of so many in our surrounding mountains. Hikers, bikers, paddlers, paragliders, climbers, and cavers. If it's an adventure that exposes the participant to the backcountry, chances are that VMR have been there to help someone that needed them. And they do it free of charge with their only reward being the humbling satisfaction they get from knowing that they have done everything they can to help someone in need. Tonight, we not only thank these mountain rescue groups for their service, I also want to salute our frontline medical forces and all emergency services personnel. We appreciate you so very much, and we don't say it enough. Thank you.
Sorry Leonard couldn't be here. I'm Saul Goodman sitting in as in Saul Goodman. Oh man, this car is so cool. Silent. Super fun to drive. It is so amazing to hear you cheer and laugh and enjoy tonight as we continue to celebrate these three incredible people. We're gonna round out our night in a moment, in a closing, but I'd like to bring to the stage a group that I know is so near and dear to everyone's hearts. We have watched them perform so many times, oftentimes with the boys either performing with them or celebrating with them. I'd like to welcome to the Villar Center stage, Hard Scrabble, Jenna Skinner, Eric Lovegren, Rob Brown, Madeline Wheeler, Andy Lister, and Ray Mary.
this one. And I get to sing it. <laughs> you say that now. Oh, I 
pull that pilot's wheel around and then back again. And I wear a blue hat, yay! Yeah! Steam powered aerial plane. With letters that go round the brim and then back again. I'm sitting in the 747 and watching them clouds roll by. Can't tell if it's sunshine, if it's the rain. Rather be sitting in a deck chair, hop over Kansas City on a genuine, authentic, old fashioned steam power aerial plane. Watching them clown roll by Can't tell if it's sunshine if it's rain Rather be sitting in a deck chair Hop over Kansas City On a genuine, authentic, old-fashioned steam power aerial plane You're too kind. So, so many years ago, when I plucked Adam from his heavy metal band and told him that he would love bluegrass if he just gave it a chance, I made him go to the Rocky Grass Academy. Made him go. It wasn't too hard. But he went to the Rocky Grass Academy with Jenna and I as our guest, and for a, a full week of full bluegrass immersion in tubing. And he always loved this next song, but we had two problems. We didn't have a fiddle player in the band, and I think he was the only one who could play it. So 10 years later, we present to you Madeline Wheeler. <laughs> and the song Adam always wanted us to play.
very nice. I'd like to play an original number, then we're going to bring out a very special guest. Thank you, folks. We'd like to welcome to the stage Ray Mary. And he brought a Kindler with him. I'm so sorry I'm late, but I had some business to take care of. Andy, Amanda, thank you for the Kindler. It's delightful. Well, he gets plugged in. Ray, I think, was close with all the guys, I know. Adam and I both worked for and with Ray, and so did Andy, and Seth was close to the Energy around. Smart program. Work around me. And of course, we all would gather around and have many, Angelo many can take the test of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is 
has been a beautiful evening. We're going to close it out together with Ray. And just, that, that's all I got. <laughs> Everybody. Awesome. Thank you. God bless these guys. Thank you, Adam, Andy, and Seth.
I wonder if I could get you guys. I only have one more paragraph. Wouldn't you like to hear them play more? Yeah. Oh. You play, you play something soft. I'll finish it off, and I'll try not to cry. I, did, I, I held it back. Uh, I'll, it's just been incredible tonight, hasn't it? Um, go ahead. Go ahead. Let's hear something as we finish this off. And by the way, this performance this evening, just overwhelming, so warm. Small technical problem. Go ahead, start, Bam. Thank you. Something light, and we'll finish this up. I always up break we'll something let... at every gig. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. He's not lying. It's been very touching. Stick to the script, Ken. But I can't for a moment. I sat backstage tonight and I watched. I watched online. I watched people's comments. I watched the impact that these three have had on everyone here, everyone that's watching. It is profound. But then I thought of this. The deepest impacts, and we all know this, are on Cindy, Faye, and Loa. They're on Amanda and her family. They're with Kaylee, Savannah, and Montana. And I can't see with the lights on, but I want all of you to know, I speak for everyone watching and everyone here, we love you. And we will always be here for you. I promise you. I wrote this this morning. And it's truthfully this one sentence that I saw and I had to share. It has been said that a great man is one that leaves others at a loss when he is gone. Tonight was a beautiful tribute to the legacies created by Seth, Adam, and Andy. As we all depart tonight, each one of us knows that this is not the end of our relationships with them. Our memories will keep their spirits alive in all of us until we see them again. Their impact on our lives was so positive and enduring that we will carry them in our hearts forevermore. Each one of us invested our time, energy, and love into them, and they put that same effort right back into us. They cared for us, and they wanted to see us happy, successful, and living our lives to the fullest, just as they were doing right up until they went ahead. They will never be forgotten and will continue to inspire all of us as though they are right here by our side, because they are. Good night, friends. God bless.
But I'll never let go of this diamond saw her another day last I heard she won the lottery she has a house full of love and her diamond ring wake up in the morning and get my best to just keep moving on life ain't always easy street sometimes time is mean but I'll never let go with this diamond where were you last night when I was alone? I was waiting by the phone. Where were you last night when I was alone? I was waiting by the phone. If you ever feel blue and you've lost everything, never give up and find your diamond. Never let go with this diamond ring. No, never let go with this diamond ring. Thank you, everybody. It's been an honor. We'll see you all. <laughs>